All right, fellow Arrow fans, time for the final episode of Read the Day, which is Broken Dolls. Oliver is saved for the police by a female vigilante who quickly vanishes into the night. He says to to track her down, which he manages through the vigilante's connection to a girl named Sin. Officer Lance discovers that the serial killer Barton Mathis, whom we arrested years earlier, escaped from prison during the earthquake and is on the killing spree again. Lance looks to Oliver, Oliver's alter ego vigilante for help when he is forced to stay away from the investigation. The pair break into a lab running tests of the evidence found in Mathis's crime scene and are able to discover the link between all of his victims. Felicity goes into cover by buying more Maiden, the lotion that all the victims had in common, from all the stores that sold it in Starling. Quentin, Jekyll, and Oliver keep it on Felicity as she does so. She snapped from an alleyway and Oliver throws an arrow at the guy, stopping him from running off with Felicity. When Quentin went after the guy, Oliver soon followed, but the cops arrived. Pike ordered Quentin arrested, but Laura calls in favors to get it dropped. Ray learns that the female is friends with Cindy, or Sin, and meets Sin. She runs off and Ray follows her to an old building. He has been hit in the head with a lead pike. He has been hit with a lead pike. After he left the station, he comes across what looks like a hobo instead with Mathis, who abducted Quentin and Laurel. The news then announced that Mathis abducted Quentin and Laurel and plans to kill them both. Once Roy is woken up, he is brought face to face with the female vigilante. She whacks him in the face for answers, but he is confused. When his phone went off with a text, she picked up the phone and read the message. It was from Thea who said that Laurel was kidnapped and that she needed him. The female then left. Barton begs to turn Laurel in, begins to turn Laurel into a doll when Oliver saves Laurel and Quentin. However, Barton escapes. The female vigilante shows up and fights Barton. Barton drops a load of pipes over her. Oliver stops him before he can kill her. However, the female vigilante kills Mathis after Oliver captures him. Laura admits her guilt to her father about Tommy's death. During the pretrial motions for Moira Queen, the assistant district attorney announces his plan to seek the death penalty for Moira's actions and the death of the citizens of the Glades. Later, the female vigilante is struck out by an agent of Rachel Ghoul. She kills him to avoid having to return to his organization. In the flashbacks to, in flashbacks to the island, Oliver and Slade rush to the aid of Shadow, who is being attacked. When they rescue Shadow, Oliver is hit by the bombs being dropped from a ship nearby. He then wakes up to learn that he is imprisoned by unknown assailants on the boat, a mazo. Hmm, interesting. So now let's take a look at some trivia surrounding this episode. Quentin Lance's full name was revealed to be Quentin Larry Lance. This is a reference to the comic's counterpart of the character, who is named Larry Lance. There are references to the New 52, the DC Comics Universe reboot. Officer Lance's patrol number is DC-52. Baron Mathis's hotel room number is 52. And Channel 52, which broadcasts Lance's abduction. Rachel Gould is referenced in this episode. In the comics, Rachel Gould is the leader of the League of Assassins and an infamous Batman villain. As soon as Batman begins for being one of the key people in Bruce Wayne's journey toward becoming the Master Vigilante. Mathis hides in an abandoned facility of the Metamorpho the benefit facility of Metamorpho Chemical. In the DC Comics, the character Metamorpho, the Element Man, is a hero as he built to control all of the chemicals to make up the human body. The boat Oliver is imprisoned on is named Amazo. Amazo is the name of a supervillain in DC Comics universe, an android possessing the powers of the entire Justice League created by, by Professor Ivo. Additionally, Amazo appears in the 2018 crossover Elseworlds. When Roy first meets Sin, she says, Back off, Amber Crombie. Ray's actor, Colton Haynes, used to model for Amber Crombie and Fitch. Mathis's lawyer, Tony Daniel, is named after the comic book writer and artist of the same name, who was the creator of The Doll Maker. Roy's defense attorney is Jean Loring. In the comics, Jean is the girlfriend, wife, and ex wife of the superhero Ray Palmer slash The Atom. In the original comics, she suffered a mental breakdown and killed Sue Dibney. The wife, the wife of another superhero, eventually becoming a, eventually becoming a villainous incarnation of Eclipso. Ray Palmer would appear in season three, but is not affiliated with Jean in any way. Instead, be engaged to Anna Loring, who shares Jean's surname. The Canary is using an abandoned clock tower as her base. In the comics, Black Canary is a member of the Birds of Prey, who have also used the clock tower as their base of operations. 
This is the last episode where Oliver is referred to as the Hood. He uses the identity of the error onwards until season 4. Mars case number ends in 4587. This would, be, this would become Oliver's prisoner and Oliver's prisoner number in season 6. And now finally, let's take a look at some goofs. Looking for the skeleton on the island, Shadow claims that she was pre-med in college back in China. Chinese colleges don't offer pre-med. A medical degree in China is a four-year bachelor's degree. Shadow lifts the arms of a skeleton and the whole hand comes up. Once the body's tissue decays, the bones are no longer connected and separate if moved. Hmm, oh, did not know that. So well, I think this episode, episode is pretty interesting, and I do like the flashbacks to show Oliver's time on Lee and Yu, and yeah, I think people are going to be surprised when they find out who the canary is, so yeah. So overall, I give Broken Dolls four arrowheads out of five. Why don't we tune in tomorrow as we take a look at the next episode, Crucible. So, until then, in the words of my favorite superhero, I'm here to fight for truth, justice, and a better tomorrow.